Coming up on this segment of Out and About Art, we're learning about shape note singing at the Polk County History Center. Shape note singing has entertained communities and fellowship gatherings for generations without the use of a single instrument other than the human voice. Let's listen to this unique style of music, which was showcased at the Polk County History Center last month. My name is Rachel Spear. I live in the Orlando area, uh, and I'm excited to be here in Bartow for the uh, shape note singing, uh, sing and learn, I think they're calling it. I started singing shape note music in the fall of 2001, uh, when I started college, I had a friend who had grown up singing shape note music and uh, told me that there was a singing uh, just in the next town over every Tuesday night. And so I was kind of curious because I had grown up singing in church choirs and I'd never heard of shape note music. And so I went and I was just immediately hooked. Uh, there were about 40 people, um, a mix of college students and people of all ages, uh, who were singing these hymns in four-part harmony really loudly. And some songs were slow and some songs were fast, but there was always a lot of energy in the room. And it just seemed like really fun. <laughs> and uh, I kept doing it throughout college, and I was delighted to learn that there's shape note singing all over the country, and in fact now all over the world. And so uh, whenever I moved to a new place, uh, I would just you know, find the local shape note scene there. <laughs> and um, I think that when I first started singing shape notes, what appealed to me about it was the music. I knew, I recognized a couple of the songs from, you know, church hymns and also from a recording I'd heard of the Boston Camerata uh, performing early American hymns. And so throughout college, I think that singing was sort of my weird hobby. And it was only after I left college um, and started to go to singings in Virginia and Baltimore and saw there that, uh, that singing really was a community, not just an activity that people got together to do together, but that the people who came regularly were really friends with one another and uh, were sort of um, not just hosting events, but uh, building a community. And that really appealed to me. I think for some people, sacred harp singing becomes almost a substitute for a religious community. Uh, because we have a lot of the familiar elements of singing hymns, praying together, eating together, <laughs> socializing after the singings. Um, but one thing that's nice about sacred harp singing is that everybody is welcome. You're welcome regardless of whether you have any musical training or skill or talent. Um, even if you're always flat, that's okay. If you are here and you're singing and you're having a good time, we're glad that you're here and we love to sit next to you and sing with you. Um, it's open to everybody regardless of religious affiliation or lack thereof. Uh, some people will say that we leave our religion and our politics at the door when we walk into a singing. Um, for some people, it's a very meaningful form of worship. Um, and for other people, it's a very meaningful form of community building. Um, and for a lot of people, it's, it's many things all at the same time wrapped into one nice package. So um, I think that I've been very fortunate to be able to sing in a lot of different places with different people. And I think it's fun that you can travel anywhere with a Sacred Heart book and immediately have a community to plug yourself into and people who are happy to see you and happy to host you in their house and happy to feed you and uh, happy that you're there to sing with them. So shape note singing refers to a style of singing that uses a particular kind of musical notation. The musical notation is just like regular standard Western musical notation that you would see in any church hymnal, except instead of all of the note heads being round circles, the note heads have different shapes which indicate the notes place on the scale. So uh, the most popular form of shape notes uses a four shape notation, which corresponds to a four syllable solfege. So our, our major scale goes fa, sol, la, fa, sol, la, mi, fa. So there are four different syllables and they have four different shapes that correlate to those syllables. There's, um, there's also seven shape notation systems, which use the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do scale. And so each of those syllables has a unique shape that corresponds to it. And the shapes are really intended to be a sight reading tool. So they were developed around 1800 uh, as a way to help people who did not have 
specific musical training, be able to sight read music and to sing together in four part harmony uh, to sort of improve the quality of congregational singing or to allow people to get together and sing hymns outside of church. And um, a number of different note systems were uh, developed and published. Uh, a number of different uh, uh, songbooks were published, different collections by different compilers. Um, so there's a great rich history of uh, songbooks that were published, you know, in New England, in the Mid-Atlantic, in the South, um, really all throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. So there's, there's sort of a rich history of people um, writing songs, compiling books, publishing the books, and then the book that really got the most traction historically was The Sacred Harp, which was originally published by B.F. White in 1844. Um, and then, you know, one of the fun things about the Sacred Harp community, the shape note singing community more broadly, is that it's a living tradition. It's not just that we're reenacting some historical way of singing together. We are getting together to sing together because we enjoy doing it, and we're still writing songs. Uh, there's a very active uh, scene of people composing new songs um, in the same style of the old songs uh, for, the, for the most part. Um, and I'm hoping that a lot of those new compositions will get into the new revision of the Sacred Harp. Um, and there are lots of other opportunities to sing new compositions as well. I think that shape note singing is very important to the people who do it. I think there are some people who are lucky enough to have been born into singing families where their parents sang, their grandparents sang. Um, it's always been an important part of their family, of their church community, of their, um, their, their, their community of friends. I think it, it, it has been an important part of um, particularly rural southern culture over the past several centuries. Um, there were a lot of churches that only had uh, a pastor come to lead a service once a month and so the other Sundays of the month uh, people would get together and sing out of a book like the Sacred Harp. I know that shape note singing has played an important part in the evolution of American sacred music. Um, the shape notes were invented here in the United States. Uh, I think I've heard it said that this is the earliest form of truly American music. Um, and of course they borrowed a lot of tunes and hymn texts from European uh, tr musical traditions. Um, but it was something that really took root uh, you know, it started in New England and took root in the rural South um, with the Great Awakenings um, and became really entwined with American Protestant religion um, throughout lots of different um, denominations. Uh, shape note music was part of camp meetings uh, as part of the Second Great Awakening in the 19th century. Um, and, you know, I think that there are some churches uh, that have used shape note hymnals um, for their congregational worship. And so it's obviously an important part of their religious traditions. Um, and as I said, I think it's just been something that ties people together in community. Um, and it's one of the few opportunities that I can think of in the modern world where people can get together and sing just for the joy of singing together. So it's not like being in a choir where you're rehearsing so that you can get ready for your big performance for an audience. It's just something that you do because you enjoy doing it and you enjoy getting together with other people and singing. And I don't know of many other opportunities that we have to do that. I feel like American music, particularly in this day and age, is very performance focused, right? We listen to the radio, we listen to um, these famous artists who have gotten record deals because they are, you know, great performers, great artists. We listen to our friends sing karaoke where they're, again, like standing up in front of an audience <laughs> to perform. And, um, and we go and we hear community concerts, which again, are performing for an audience. So I think for me, it's, it's been really wonderful to be part of a singing community where we sing for ourselves, we sing for one another, we sing for um, to worship God, we sing for love of the music, um, we sing for all these reasons and performing for an audience is not among those reasons. <laughs> um, so I think it's just a different way to connect with music um, and to, to form community bonds than, than sort of other things that we have available to us. For more information about upcoming events at the Polk County History Center, visit www.polk-county.net forward slash history hyphen center.